Hi everyone. Welcome to this section of R programming. Let's learn about data manipulation in R. And here we will learn about dplyr package. And when we talk about this dplyr package, it is much faster and much easier to read than base R. So dplyr package is used to transform and summarize tabular data with rows and columns. You might be working on a data frame or you might be getting in a inbuilt R data set, which can then be converted into a data frame. So we can get this package dplyr by just calling in library function. And this can be used for grouping by data, summarizing the data, adding new variables, selecting different set of columns, filtering our data sets, sorting it, selecting it, arranging it, or even mutating. That is basically creating new columns using functions on existing variables. So let's see how we work with dplyr. Now here I can basically get the package here. So I can just say, install dot packages dplyr now we already see the the package here which is showing up so i will just select this one i can do a control enter and that will basically set up the package package dplyr successfully unpacked so that is done now you can start using this package by just doing a library dplyr and this was built it shows me my version of r so let's also use a inbuilt data set that is new york flights 13 so we can do install.packages and that will search and get that relevant data set. I can again call it by using library function. Now once that is done, we can look at some sample data here by just doing view flights and that shows me the data in a neat and a tabular format which shows me year, month, day, departure time, scheduled departure time and so on. Now we can also do a head to look at some initial data, which can help us in understanding the data better. So what is this data about? How many columns we have? What are the data types or object types here? It shows me how many variables we have. So this is fine. Now we can start using dplyr and in that we can use say filter function if we would want to look in for specific value. Now here we have the column as month. So I will do a filter. Now I'm creating a variable F1. I'm using the filter function on flights, which we already have. And then what we can do is we can basically look at the month where the month value is 07. So let's look at that. And this one, you can do a view on F1 which shows me the data wherein you have filtered out all the data based on month being seven. So this is a simple usage of filter. We can take some other example. We may want to include multiple columns. So we can say F2 filter flights. And here we will say month is equal to seven, day is three, and then look at the value of F2. If you are interested in seeing this, and that tells you the month is seven and day is three, you could also look into a more readable format by using view on F2 and that gives me my selected result. So we are just extracting in some specific value. We can keep extending this. So here we can say flights is what we would want to work on. I'm using the filter function. So I can straight away, instead of creating a variable then then doing a view, I can also do a view in this way. I can just pass in my filter within the view and within this, I'm saying filter. I would want to look at the flights, month being 09, day being 2, and origin being LGA. And then that shows me the value here. And obviously, you can scroll and look at all the columns. And if you see the origin column, it shows the selected value. So now we have filtered our, our data based on values in three different columns. Now, what we can also do is we can use and or we can use or operators. So I could have done this in a, a little different way. So I could have said head, which shows me initial result. I will do a flight. So within my head function, I'm passing in this. And what does that contain? So you are saying flights. 
And in this flights data set, you would want to pick up the month being the column. So we use the dollar symbol here. We give in a value and I'll say and and I'll again say flights wherein I will select the day being two and 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 remember when you talk about and it is going to check if all the values are met true. So then you say flights origin LGA and you look at the value. So in this way I can filter out specifically multiple values by specifying columns. Now we could have done it in this way. We could have created a view or we could have assigned this to a variable and then done a view on that where we could have selected month being day and origin or you can be more specific in specifying all the columns. It makes the code more readable. So let's look at the values and here you are looking at head which shows me based on month day and then you can look for further columns for other variables that is origin being LGA. Now what we can also do is we can do some slicing here to select rows by particular position. So I can say slice and I would want to look at rows 1 to 5 and I can do this. So you can always assign or look at the view of this. I can just do here. So when I did a slide 1 is to 5, it shows me my entries for 1 to 5. Now similarly, we can do a slice 5 to 10. And now you are looking at 5 to 10 values. So you can always look at the complete data and then you can slice out particular data. Now mutate is usually a function which is used when you would want to apply some variable on a particular data set and then you would want to add it to your existing data frame or you would want to add a new column. So this is where you use mutate which is mainly used to add new variables. So let's see how you, you work on mutate. So it's pretty simple. So you create a variable over delay. Now I would want to do a mutate so that it adds a new column. So I'm selecting my data, which is flights. I will call the new column as overall delay. And then basically I can look at overall delay being arrival delay minus departure delay. So let's create this and let's look at view of this, which shows me or which should show me my new column, which is overall delay which was not in my original data set. So you can anytime do a head on this one to compare the value. So this one shows me arrival delay and then there are many other variables. What you can also do is you can do a view and you could have just look at flights if you would want to compare. So you can look at the flights and this one would not have any overall delay column. So it basically shows me 19 columns only what we see here. And if you do a view on overall delay, then that basically shows me 20 columns. So we know that the new column has been added to this overall delay. So if you would want to work with 20 columns, you will use overall delay. If you would want to work with your original data set, you will use flights. Now you can also use a transmute function, which is used to show only the new column. So we can do an overall delay. And at this time, we will say transmute. We will say flights, overall delay. The computation remains same. But at this time, if I look at view on overall delay, it only shows me the new column. So sometimes we may want to compute result based on two variables or two columns and just look at the new value. And then we can decide if we would want to add it to our existing structure. Now you can also use summarize and summarize basically helps us in getting a summary based on certain criteria. So we can always do a summarize and what we can do is we can look at our data and we can say on what basis we would want to summarize this particular data. So we can do a summarize function. Now summarize on flights. I will say average airtime and I would want to calculate an average. So for that I'm using an inbuilt function called mean. I will do that on airtime column. 
So let's look at flights once again. And here we can see there is arrival time, not air time, sorry, arrival time. And we would want to do some average on this particular data. We would want to summarize this. So what I'll do is I will use the summarize function. I will say average air time. And this one, I will look at mean of air time. So let's see if there is a air time column. I might be, let's look at this one and I will delay. And yes, we have an air time. So we were actually looking at summarizing based on air time, not the arrival time. So air time is how much time it takes in air for this particular flight. And we will want to use the trans summarize function, not the transmute. So summarize flights, average air time, and this one, we will calculate the mean of average air time. And I will also do a NA removal, which is I'm saying true. So let's do this. And that basically shows me the average air time is 151. I can also do a total air time where I'm doing a summation of values or I can get the standard deviation or I can basically get multiple values such as mean. I can say total air time where I'm doing a summation and then I can look at other values which is if you would want to put in standard deviation here, you could do that. So let's look at the result of this summarize and this basically allows me to get some useful information which is summarized based on a particular function such as mean, sum, standard deviation or all three of them. Now let's look at grouping by. So sometimes we may be interested in summarizing the data by groups and that's where we use the group by function. So we can always use the group by clause. Now here we are taking a different data set. So we will say for example, let's look at head of empty cars and that is basically my data set on empty cars. Now that shows me the model of the car. It shows me mileage, cylinder power, and your horsepower and various other characteristics or variables in this particular data set. So here we can say, let's do a grouping by gear. So there is a column called gear. So I will call it by gear. I will look at my data set. And then what I'm using here, which you see with these percentage and greater symbol is called piping. So that basically feeds your previous data frame into next one. So this is sometimes useful. And you can get this by just saying control shift and M and you can then use this. So we are going to have piping. So I'm saying empty cars. Now this is my original data set where I did a head or I could have done a view on this one if you would want to see it in a more readable format. And that basically shows me the data. So we are using a different data set. So I want to group it by the gear column. So I'm going to call it by gear. And this one takes my data that is empty cars. I'm using the piping. And then I'm saying group the data based on gear column. That's done. Now let's look at the value of by gear. Or you can always do a view. So remember, whenever you're doing a group by, it is giving you a internal object where your data is grouped based on a particular column. So we can look at the values here. You can do a view that shows you your data grouped based on a particular column. Now I can again use the summarize function where I would want to now work on the new one where it was grouped based on gear. So I'm doing a summarize and here I'm going to say gear one, which will be having the value of summation on the gear column. And then I'm saying gear two, which is mean. Well, you could give some meaningful names to this. And let's look at the value of this one, where we are basically now looking at the values, which is sum and mean values based on the gear. Similarly, we can use look at different example. So we can say by gear, and I'm again using piping. But earlier we had taken gear, we had grouped the data 
and we called it by gear so we took our original data set empty cars but now within this particular data which was grouped by gear i will take this data set i will use the piping and i will summarize it where i am saying within this particular data set i would want to get the sum or i would want to get the mean and then you can look at the values so what you are doing is you are either looking at your original data set or you're looking at the data which was already grouped and then you can look at the values now here what we can do is we can group by cylinder say it might be you are interested in looking at data which is summarized based on the cylinder column you can do that and then for this by cylinder i'm doing a piping where i'm using the summarize function and summarizing will then be done based on the mean values of the gear column or the horsepower so let's do this and then you can basically look at the value at any point you may want to look at the data set again so just do ahead and you can look at what does the value contain and by cylinder or by gear and do ahead and it gives you the value so you can always do some summarizing or grouping in these ways. Now here we are going to use sample underscore n function and sample underscore fraction for creating samples. So for this, let's take the flights data set again and we would want to get 15 random values. Now that is done and it shows me 15 rows with some random values from the data. What you can also do is you can do a portion of data by using sample underscore fraction and here I'll say flights I'll say 0.4 which will return 40 percent of the total data so this can be useful when you are building your machine learning where you would want to split your data into training and test might be you are interested in some portion of the data so you can do this which is very useful function and then you can look at the value of that now what we can also do is we can use a range function so like we were doing a grouping by or we were trying to pull out a particular column so in the same way we can use a range which is a convenient way of sorting than your base r sorting so for a range function let's do a view based on a range so we will work on the flights data set which we have and here what we would want to do is we would want to arrange the flights data set which is based on year and departure time and we are doing a view out of it so that basically gives me the data which is arranged based on your year and departure time now i can do a head to give me some highlighting of that data now the piping operator what we are using can be used in these ways also so here i will say df i will just assign the data set empty cars to it let's look at the df which has basically your different models you can obviously look at the head or view of it to look at useful information we can also go for nesting options which can be useful so we are creating a variable called result here now that has the arrange function so what does this arrange function do so when we would want to use arrange to sort the data so i would want to sort the data but what data would i sort so i will use sample n which will give me some portion of the data or some sample data now what is that sample data so here we are using nesting that is earlier when we did a sample we just said data and how many random samples we want but instead of giving that what we are going to do is we are going to use filter here now this filter will work on df so filtering will happen based on the mileage which is greater than 20 i will say size is 5 and i would want to basically arrange this in a descending order so i'm using the des on this particular mileage column by default it is always ascending so let's get the result out of this which will basically show me the mileage details in a descending order so this is my data frame and now we can look at the result what we have created 
So just do a view or do a head and look at the view. So here you see mileage where the highest value is on the top. And we were only interested in five values in our random sample. So that's why when you did a view, it shows your five values and it shows in a descending order based on mileage. So we have not only used an inbuilt function, we have not only arranged the data, that is, we have sorted the data, but we have sorted the data based on a descending order on a particular column. We have said the value should be greater than 20. And we have also said we just need five random samples. Now, let's look at some other examples. So you can always do a multi assignment. So I can say filter, wherein I'm going to use DF, which was assigned empty cars. I'm going to say mileage should be greater than 20. Then I say B, which is going to get a sample out of A. And I just want five random values. So let's look at that. So we have B, which is going to get a set of five values from A. Now I will create a result variable, which will arrange B, which is sample data in a descending order. Now let's look at the result of this and that basically shows me what we were seeing earlier. So you can do a multi assignment where you can create a variable, get a sample out of it and then basically whatever is that result, you can arrange that or sort that in a descending or by default descending order. So same thing, we can do it using pipe operator. So piping, so here I will say result. I'm passing in my DF, that's the data set. I'm using piping and which basically tells what you need to do on this particular data set. So I'm going to filter out the data based on mileage 50, sorry, mileage 20. Then I'm going to push that or forward it to get the random sample. And whatever is this random sample is going to be pushed. So you are arranging this in a descending order. So this is one more way of doing it. And then basically you can look at the result. So these are some simple examples where you can use your dplyr with multiple assignments or using your nesting to filter out the data. You can also do a arrange, which is to sort the data. You can get some random samples out of it. You can summarize the data. You can also summarize the data based on one or two or multiple columns. And you can use some inbuilt functions to summarize the data based on some functions which are applied on the variables or on the columns. You can transmute it where you would be interested in only looking at one column. You can mutate it where you want to add a new column. You can slice it and you can give the conditions where you can say and or, or to filter out the data. So what we can also do is on this particular data set which we have say for example DF where I have my data, let's look at this one. And if I just do a DF at this point, it shows me my data set. And if you would be interested only in particular column, then your dplyr also allows you to, either we can do a filter or we can simply do a select. Now for selecting, we can choose uh, our data. So for example, I'll say DF underscore I'm interested in mileage, I'm interested in horsepower, might be I'm interested in your cylinders in this. And for this one, what I can do is when I would want to do a select, I can basically say selected DF, let's call it some name. I can say control shift M, which is for piping. And then basically what you can do is you can do a select and you can choose your columns. So I was interested in mileage. I was interested in horsepower. I was interested in cylinder. And here what I'm doing is I'm using a select where I can look at the new data frame. So let's do this. And uh, I'm sorry, here we will have to give it DF. This is where you are passing in your data. Yeah, now this one is done and we can look at the value of this one by just doing a DF or head on DF underscore 
mileage horsepower cylinder and look at the selected result so you can be looking at selective columns i could have done this filter but filter will always look for a condition say your mileage is greater than 20 or might be your cylinders are more than four or something else but when you do a select you are selecting specific columns so view always gives you all the columns head gives you highlight but then select can be useful when we are interested in looking at only specific data so this is how you can use dplyr for manipulation for your data transformation for basically filtering out the data by selecting particular data and then working on it so similarly there is one more package called tidyr and we'll see how we can use data manipulation done using your tidyr package let's uh, learn about the tidyr package which makes it easy to tidy your data and this basically helps you creating a more cleaner data so which is easy to visualize and model now this comes with uh, mainly four functions so you have gather which makes your data wide or it makes wide data longer so that is basically used to stack up multiple columns you have spread function which makes long data wider that is stacking the data together or stack if you would want to unstack the data to data and you are talking about data which has same attributes and then your spread can spread the data across multiple columns you have separate which is function which splits single column into multiple columns and to complement that you have one more function which is unite and that combines multiple columns into single columns so these are four main functions which are used in your tidyr packet so let's look how we work with this so let me bring up my r studio here now for this first is let me just clean up my screen here doing a control l so i will install the package it is already installed but we can just do a control enter and then i can say do you want to restart r prior to reinstall so install i'll say okay and it is basically going to get the package now it says package tid tidyr that is tidrs has been successfully unpacked let's use that package with using r library function and that was built under r version 3.6 now i can basically start using these functions so for example here we are creating a data frame so let's say n is 10 and then we basically would say we will call it white now that's the variable name i'm using the data dot frame function i'm saying id which will be 1 to n so that will take the values from 1 to 10 and then these are the values which have 10 entries so this is a vector phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 let's create a data frame out of it now that's done we can have a look at our data frame by just doing a view wide and that shows me the id column and it has phase dot 1 phase dot 2 and phase dot 3 now we can use our function so for example we can work with gather that is reshaping the data from wide format to long format and basically you can say stacking up multiple columns so let's see how we do that here i'll call it long i'm working on wide i'm using the piping functionality and then i'm using gather so this one i will say what will be the data which i will use so we are using wide as a data frame then i am saying response time so that will be basically one more column and then you have your columns which you would want to basically stack so i am saying from phase one to phase three so let's do this and once this is done let's have a look at our variable long so this one shows me that i have an id column i have the response time column and i have the face column which we mentioned and that basically has all the values stacked in so you have face dot one face dot two and face dot three so have all the columns are being stacked here so all my data so now i have totally 30 entries in this one so this is basically using your gather function now sometimes we may want to use a separate function now separate function is basically splitting a single column 
into multiple columns so which we would want to use when multiple variables are captured in a single variable column okay so let's look at an example of this one so let's say long separate that's what we will call we will work on this long which has all the data stacked in as the columns we selected then i'm saying separate i want the face column and then i would say when i separate the columns what are my column names now i could also give a separator by giving a comma and then mentioning the separator if that is required so let's do this now once this is done let's have a look at our long separate so what we see here is the column which we used so we were doing a face column and that was to be split and we wanted to split it into target and number so that's what we see here so you have face being split into target and number and then you have the response time so this is how you use the separate function now there is also something called as unite function which is basically a complementing of separate function so it takes multiple columns and combines the elements to a single column so for example here we will call it long unite and we will take long separate which was separating the data we want to unite so we will take face target number and we want to have a separator between them so let's basically do this and now let's look at the result of this unite so you see you have the face and target merged together so you have face dot one the separator is dot as we have mentioned and we have united multiple columns so this is one more function of your tidy r which helps you basically uh, tidy up your data or put it in a particular way now then you have your spread function and this is basically for unstacking so that is if you have if you would want to convert a stack to data or if you would want to unstack the data which is of same attributes spread can be used so that you can spread the data across multiple columns so it will take two columns say key and value and spread it into multiple columns so it makes long data wider so we can look at this one we will say long unite i'm using the piping i will use the spread function i'll work on the face column and response time and let's do this and then let's do a view on this so it tells me our data is back in the shape as it was in the beginning so these are four functions which are very helpful when we work with tidyr package hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here